Now, sermon. Now, in a sermon, I suggest that we use this outline. That you can use this outline, and it will help you. And、uh, and it has important elements there. And now, not every sermon has to follow this order, but it is a suggestion. And some parts must, you know, should always be there. The three parts that is highlighted. That's God's nature and grace. We should always talk about in any message. We should always talk about God's nature and grace related to that. And then also,、uh, we should have the law to remind people and warn people. And then how to do it? How? How is the law? But is the action part how to do it? And the reminder and warning is the warning part, and the, uh, it could include the punishment part if we don't obey. It, what are the consequences? And then first we should have interpretation of the passage.、Uh, in many of the assignments, the people don't interpret the passage. Now you notice that whenever I talk about any passage, I will explain、uh, the passage, and I will and first I'll explain is、uh, the, uh, what does the words say? What is the communication but uh, uh, of the words、uh, in the passage? And then I will go deeper. So does it have any deeper meaning? So,、um, so we learn to we learn we want to learn to interpret the meaning of the passage. Now, sometimes we we need to explain certain terms and also some interpretation.、Um, we need to find out the exact meaning. For instance, in Matthew ten, it talks about you know. If、in the name of disciple, that you give a cup of cold water to a little one, by no means you lose your reward. Now, this passage, in the name of a disciple, it doesn't say clearly whether it's whether because you are a disciple or he's a disciple. So, is it doing to anyone or do it to Christians? But in Mark nine forty one, it tells us. So we can use Mark nine forty one to interpret. Mark、uh, Matthew ten. In Mark nine forty one, it says that you know that、uh, if anyone give you a cup of water because you belong to Christ, because you belong to Christ, then someone give you a, gives you a cup of water, he will by no means lose his re- reward. So it's telling us that this passage is saying if we do it to Christians, that we do the nice things to help Christians, then we'll by no means lose. A reward, and also Matthew twenty-five talk about do it to one,、uh, one of the、uh, brothers of Jesus. Now, so do we do good things to non-Christians? Yes, we should.、Uh, we should do it to them, like for instance, our family members. Of course, we should. But at the same time, we want to help them to bring them to Jesus Christ. To help to try to help them to believe in Jesus. So that's something God is pleased with us. So. I would think that this verse, do it to、uh, belong because you belong to Christ to give a cup of water to you. That would also include giving a cup of water or doing anything good to a non-Christian in order to help them to belong to Christ, help them to believe in Jesus to be become a Christian. So that include doing good to the Christians and doing good to the non-Christians to try to bring them to Jesus Christ. Of course, not every time we do something good to someone, we have to tell them about Jesus. Like, for instance, your family member, we don't have to do that. But we are nice to them. At the same time, we, from time to time, we tell them about Jesus. So that's interpretation of the brother who to give it to a little、uh, one of this little one. So who is that little one? We need to interpret that. In many passages, we need to interpret that. For instance,、uh, in Second Corinthians, talk about the judgment seat of Christ. Now, some people say there is a great red throne for the non-Christians, and then there is the judgment seat of Christ for the Christians. Now, I don't see the Bible supporting that. In Matthew twenty-five, it talks about in the third parable, the Son of Man descend in the glory, and then. He would place all people in front of him, 
uh, the sheep on the right hand side is like a shepherd separating the sheep and the goats. The sheep on the right hand side and the goat on the left hand side. And so that is judgment, judge, judging all people, the Christians and non-Christians. Christians. So when it uses a term, the judgment seat of Christ, doesn't mean it's a different judgment. So it's a judgment when Jesus Christ descends from heaven and he places all people in front of him. So we have to explain passages from the, with the light from the whole Bible. Okay, so that's interpretation and examples and why. Positive examples and negative examples. Now, for instance, we talk about, uh, if I use the theme of loving people, loving people. Uh, why do we need to talk about examples, positive examples and negative examples? Because sometimes Christians hear sermons and they hear, oh, love each other. And then they will say, yes, I love each other. I, I do love my, uh, the, my fellow Christians. I love my family members. They didn't think about whether they are really loving them. They think they are nice. But we need to give them examples of how Christians don't love each other. For instance, sometimes in some new members, new uh, friends coming into a church, many Christians just neglect them, don't talk to them. They will say, well, I don't know him, so I, I cannot talk to him. But this is the house of God. We should welcome them and say, good to see you here, welcome here. So it's something we should do, but many Christians don't do that. They don't welcome people. And how about to the spouse? Do we always love the spouse and say, well, I, I care about you and I notice that you have this problem. I'm going to help you. I'm going to work with you. Uh, and I understand your, your pain and suffering. Do we do that to our spouse and love them? Or do we, you know, very often neglect them and when they say, oh, I, I have too much work. I, I, uh, I feel pressure to do a, a lot of things. It's under, I'm under pressure. And then very often the, the other person doesn't respond to that. Then he's not loving the person. He will say, well, you have to do it. You have to do it. Keep doing it. So it's just giving pressure. It's just telling the other person what to do. So when you get used to discerning grace and the law, when you get used to that, then when someone talks, you know that whether he is using grace or the law. Now I have marked my Bible for years with three colors. One color is red, that is like the blood of Jesus. And that is red, it would be the grace of God, the love of God, the blessings of God, the salvation and the forgiveness of God and the help of God. So that's red color. And the opposite is blue color and that is judgment and warning. And then there's also green color. It's telling us what to do, to pray, uh, to pray, to love God, to worship God, to forgive each other. So those are the green color. Uh, green and blue are both the law, but the blue is the warning and the punishment, and the green is uh, uh, telling us what to do. So I mark my Bible with these three colors, and then when I now when I read any passage, I can always tell what it what it is, whether it's grace, or whether whether it's warning and punishment, criticism, or whether it's telling people what to do. And also sometimes when people tell other people what to do, they use the tone of criticism or judgment, and say, "You must do it now. Hurry up and do it now." So that has a tone that. That is the green color, tell them what to do, but it has a tone of the blue color. Like for instance, sometimes people say, well, uh, you must do it. If you don't do it, and you know, I, then uh, there will be bad consequences and, and you're lazy. So that's criticism. That is green telling them what to do, but also there's the blue. Now I encourage you to mostly motivate people to do with great grace, that's the red color that I marked, you know, it's like the blood of Jesus, grace, and tell them what to do is the green. We also want to sometimes want to remind them of the punishment from God, but, but it should not be the main, uh, main message. We should not be telling Christians, if you don't repent, God will punish you. That we should not be using punishment as a motivation. But we can tell people, you know, 
uh, when we obey God, God is very happy. So that is motivation by grace. And then we can tell them that if we sin and we let us the sin stay in us, then there can be bad consequences. Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy. So that's a reminder and a warning. But we can say it in a gentle way. Now, some people might say, well, if we're gentle, people won't change. Uh, I don't think so. Now, now, of course, there are people who, who are just stubborn. Uh, they, you know, if you are gentle, they don't listen. And then you yell at them, they listen. But if you yell at them and then they listen, the change is not long term. It's the most important change the, ad, uh, the mental attitude that to understand that God is in control of everything. When they love God, they obey God. God is very, very happy and God will bless them. And there's no way to avoid God's eyes. He will see our hearts. He will see what is inside us. So it's, it's wise to obey God and love God and follow Him. So, uh, okay, so the, the negative example in a sermon, okay, now I'm talking about sermons, how, how we uh, uh, use this uh, God's nature and grace preaching method. Just talk about God's nature to motivate people. That we have these negative examples of people don't obey God, don't love God. And if the theme now, I use an example, is uh, to love God, that we should love each other. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, to love each other. Then we can say, you know, there are negative examples. There are people who, uh, they, they're being church for a long time but they don't care about the people who come into the church or they are not kind to the spouse or children they put the anger onto the spouse or children now even though they have done something wrong but they they have so much anger in them that they want to you know, want to explode the anger want to explode so then it's hard to have love and then good examples would be people who really dedicate their life uh, dedicate their time, their money, you know, to help other people and bless other people. So we can use examples like this. But it doesn't need to be put together like that. It can be put in different places. It can be put in uh, uh, other parts. Uh, like for instance, in the how. In the how, when we, can, when we talk about how we love each other, then we can tell people, when you love each other, then God is very happy. And I can tell you a story of how people love each other. How for instance, I myself, I remember the, the girl when I first went to church, uh, she said to me, I hope to see you next week when, when I left. And that motivated me to come back. So that one sentence, what she said, motivated me. So that's um, an example of how when we love each other, how it would affect other people. Okay, so this is a su suggested outline. And then, so first is interpretation of the passage, and then next will be some examples of people who don't have that love for God. Now, if the mess, love for people, if the theme is love, that we should love one another. Then, uh, and then there are positive examples. And then God's nature and grace. Nature is his inner quality. God is full of love, full of acceptance. He cannot stop loving because He is full of love. And then His grace. Grace is what He does to us. He sent His Son to die for us and He worked in our heart to draw us to come to Him. And then He worked in our lives to change us so that uh, first we are loved by God. We experience His love so that we are comforted and healed. And then He uh, gave us the nature to love people so that we can love each other. So many Christians found that after they are saved, they found that inside them there is a voice telling them to love other people, not to yell at other people and forgive other people. So that is what God is doing to change us so that we can learn to love one another. So we love because God loved us first and also He changed us so that we can love one another. And also when we love people, God is very happy and He'll bless us. So here we can talk about at least a few things. First, when we talk about God's nature, that is His nature, His inner quality, and then His grace, at least we can talk about first how He loved us, how He 
Now, he tells us to love other people. First, he loves us. So how God first loves us and how he changes us. And then how when we obey, he'll remember and reward us. So at least th these three parts that you can talk about God's grace. Let me say that again. So if we talk about love one another, we can first say God is the one who loves us first. When Jesus walked around, he always loves people. He always show his concern for people. He always stopped for the people who are in need. And he always responds to the requests of people to help them. So God came to help us. And then God changed us so that we can help other people. And then third, when then when we help other people, God is very happy and reward us. So at least these three po points can help us to talk about God's grace in any, any theme. Now, I use another theme, any example. For instance, uh, we have a message about wisdom, how to have the wisdom of God. First, God is wise, that is uh, His nature. He is wise in His creation, wise in His salvation, wise in changing people, wise in the plan of God. And then, His grace. First, He, uh, he used His wisdom to save us and to, uh, you know, to meet our needs, uh, to draw us to Him. So He first did this to us that He uses His wisdom to bless us. He creates our body very wonderful. He gives us wisdom. So all this, He, he, he uses His wisdom to, to uh, bless us. And the second is, He gives us wisdom so we can handle diff difficult, uh, different situations. And then thirdly, when we use God's wisdom, He remembers it and He blesses us. So when we talk about any theme, we can talk about this now. Uh, if I use joy, if the, uh, the theme is rejoice in the Lord, then God's nature is, He is full of joy. He is a joyful God. In heaven, is, heaven is full of joy. Every person in heaven is full of joy. And in heaven, in the future, we'll always enjoy the happiness of the Lord. So that's His nature. And His grace, first, He... Uh, that He brings us to salvation with joy. So when we are saved, we can experience His joy. Uh, many people, when they're saved, they ask Jesus to forgive them. Suddenly, that burdens go away and they experience joy of the Lord. Okay, so he, in His grace, in His joy, He, he blesses us. And then He gives us joy. When we come to Him, He gives us joy. And then when we live in the joy of the Lord, when we rejoice in God, then God is very happy and He will reward us. So for any theme, you can at least talk about these three parts of His grace. That, but if you can think of other, other points, that you can always include that. Let me use another example. So I hope that you uh, remember. Uh, forgive. Okay, if the theme is to forgive other people. And um, God's nature. God is a forgiving God. He wants to forgive people. And He has a plan to forgive people by sending Jesus to die for us so that when we repent of our sins, then He can forgive us. He is a repent, He is a forgiving God. And then His grace for us. First, He forgives us when we trust in Him. No matter how sinful we are, no matter how many times we have sinned, when we repent, of, uh, sincerely, He always will forgive us. And the second, He gives us the ability to forgive other people. When, when we don't forgive other people, the Holy Spirit will keep talking to us and help us to repent. And, and we, feel, we just feel uneasy when we don't repent someone. There is, you know, God will put this uneasy feeling inside us that we feel guilty when we don't repent other people. So He motivates us to to re forgive other people. And then third, when we forgive other people, God is very, very happy. Especially when we forgive our enemies, God is very happy. So I hope you remember this. God's nature, His inequality, and His grace, three parts. 
that how He uses that nature to bless us, and how He gives that nature to us, and how when we follow His nature, He will remember and He will bless us. Okay, and then reminder and warning. So many people don't forgive, and they forget what Jesus said. You know, if you don't forgive your uh, your brothers, then your Father in heaven also will not forgive you. So if you we don't forgive other people, then the Father will not forgive us, and that's very serious. That means losing salvation. That is very very serious. So we there's the uh, warning, a reminder that also we can use different uh, method to remind people. Some people say they have forgiven other people, but they still don't like them. They don't. Now it doesn't mean we have to like the the uh, the. Uh, you know that uh, the behavior of this person. Now, some people they're still not changing, but we still we forgive them, and we we don't hate them. That's what I mean. Some people they they forgive someone, but they hate them. They they don't really want to bless them. So real forgiveness include forgiving and putting down the sins and be willing to bless them.